Now, Kuna Wolf will give us uh, a talk about how to bring together uh, Deviant and Rails framework. Kuna, thank you. Thanks. Okay, well, I, I started uh, playing with Rails uh, maybe two years ago, and uh, well, I find it to be a very a nice uh, like a application framework for web development and it's uh, becoming very popular yes but uh, uh, i have suffered uh, trying to integrate it into the uh, debian both for using it as a developer uh, but even more uh, in order to to package uh, rails applications it's well we will see several of the reasons and then well uh, i expect interaction yep uh, first, and uh, here I, I will also request the Lucas to step up a bit because he was planning uh, to give a, a buff on, on this uh, topic. Uh, Ruby libraries or modules are called and di distributed with a strange uh, package man management system called GEMS. Yep. Uh, GEMS basically, well, uh, it's a... Um, uh, it's not only a packaging system, but it's a, a way of calling modules or calling libraries from, from within Ruby. So a, a program can specify easily which, uh, libra which library, which version it, uh, it's going to use. Yep, instead of using require this file, you say require gem and the name of a gem. And when it works, it works. Yep. Uh, but well, one of the main points is that uh, it uh, encourages, it allows uh, people to use the different, inst uh, different versions and having uh, installed different versions of the same software. So. So we have several problems with Zenit No. No? Okay. Um, so there are several problems with Ruby Gems. Uh, so the, um, well, uh, what? Uh, this is still mine. Okay, so give you. No, no shit, that's a mix. That's okay, that's, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, Rebel Gems has a way for users to install libraries which are not supported by Debian currently, and uh, to not package inside Debian. Uh, so you can see it as uh, some kind of tar, basically. It doesn't do much more than tar. Uh, one problem with Rebel Gems is that it's so intrusive. Uh, when you, for example, if you compare it with CPAN, CPAN is really great. RubyGems is um, not so great, <laughs> to say more, um, because uh, in the source that uses RubyGem, um, you have to use spe some special instructions to use RubyGems. So if you want to use the same source without RubyGem, you have to patch the source. Um, so for example, you use required gem to load libraries uh, using RubyGems, you don't just use require. So if you want to package it without using RubyGems, you have to drop all those instru instructions. Um, another problem with RubyGems is that uh, if you use require gem to load a library, and you already have that library installed but not as a gem, for example, because you installed it from a Debian package, it doesn't work. It doesn't see that it already has that library. It, you, you, you end up with two copies of the same library, one from the Debian package and one from the gem. Um, the, the another problem is that uh, RubyGems is very popular inside the Ruby community, uh, especially inside the sub part of the Ruby community who does web applications. And there are lots of libraries now that are only distributed as RubyGems. So uh, some parts of the Ruby community totally stopped distributing libraries as tarballs because they think that it's useless. <coughs> and if, if, when you talk to them, it's really hard to get them to understand why it's still important for some people to be able to uh, get this tarball. So uh, degemification of complex Ruby applications is very complex. So for example, if you want to package uh, Rails, you have to change, to, to patch a lot of files and well, one of the complex applications like Rails, you have to patch a lot of files just to remove the calls to RubyGems. So that it's, it's, not, it's not using RubyGems. It's very simple but very intrusive and takes a lot of time just to replace every call to require a gem, to just require, and it should always work but well. 
Another problem with Rabbit Gems is apparently it was developed by people who probably only uh, were familiar with Windows. So they didn't um, fix the problems that were fixed on Unix a long time ago with uh, library versioning, with SO names and stuff like that. So um, basically, uh, you just depend on the version of the gem that you want, and it gets installed. You don't depend, there's no uh, notion of stable I API for Ruby gems. You don't version the API, you version the library. So usually, when you start using Ruby gem, after a while, you get lots of different versions of the same li libraries installed. And then you get into the same problem as on Windows when you have um, uh, one application that wants to use one, one version of one DLL and the other one, another version of the same DLL. So you get that with Ruby gems. That's quite uh, um, a backward move, terrible backward, backward mode. Okay, thanks. Yep, and, and, and this is well quite uh, pervasive in the in the Ruby developer com uh, community. They they will very often defend the this. Uh, eh? What happened here? Ah, the projector. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'll just continue talking them. Uh, the thing is, they take pride uh, on, on all these uh, problems because they, they are very keen on the agile methodologies. So uh, they say it's, it's the right way to, solve, to, to, to program. Yeah, but well, I'll, I'll get to the cultural differences in a bit. Then, well, uh, what Lucas uh, presented is uh, about GEMS, which is the general uh, Ruby library format. Uh, but then, if, if we continue getting to Rails-specific uh, things, we get something uh, even uglier, although much more comfortable sometimes, called uh, plugins. Yes, gems are general modules that uh, should be usable uh, at any point of the application, but the, the plugins are specific to Rails behavior. You, uh, for example, you can code a plugin that modifies the way the, the controllers uh, are, are to be used, so they integrate into Rails for workflow. Uh, usually you don't even have to call them to, uh, to include them, because their, their sole presence, there's a file called init.rb, uh, it modifies the, the, uh, the Rails classes th themselves, so they just have to be in, in their place. And I'll get to this later. Uh, you, you can have a lot of things inside the Rails root directory slash vendor slash plugins or whatever there. Yeah, vendor is uh, the place for storing any code you didn't write yourself. Uh, okay, uh, some pl uh, plugins have been started to migrate to become gems. This means they 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 start cleaning up some, some of their intrusiveness into the whole process and allowed to be called for, uh, from the outside. Of course, uh, in, we still need to specify sometimes some uh, uh, to allow them to be included in some core libraries. Uh, the, the role of uh, init.rb, so it's a bit more of a, of a, of a burden to the programmer, but uh, I hope that uh, people will start realizing that instead of uh, bare plugins, they should be writing gems, or, well, uh, proper <laughs> modules. Uh, but, uh, well, at least there is something sane about the gems. Gems need a version number. Yep. It's, uh, it's uh, not, a legal, not, not legal for a gem not to have a version, uh, as for a Debian package. But uh, as plugins are just dropped inside your directory, very often, the, uh, and very common plugins don't have the concept of ver versioning, so we are left only with the possibility of uh, packaging uh, git snap snapshots or, or something like that. Uh, we cannot also easily automate the tracking of new upstream releases, because the only thing we can do is uh, git pull or, or, uh, or uh, updates of versions or, or whatever. There's no upstream version. Yep. Okay, the vendorization. What does this mean? I think this is the gravest sin in the, in the Rails uh, uh, packaging problem. 
uh, both the Rails API, yeah, the, the, the core framework, and all of their plugins are moving at a, a, at a large speed. Again, they call this uh, agile practices in programming. So, well, w when I talk to um, uh, my rail, Rails uh, happy friends, they say, yes, I will always develop with the cutting edge, and then when I'm going to freeze for, for production, well, I just leave the, the things as they were working. So say if I wrote an application half a, uh, half a year ago, uh, I will ship it to production with Rails 2.0.2. Well, right now the, the, the new version is 2.1. But inside the vendor directory, I will s still ship the old version. Of course, this is uh, unmaintainable. Uh, whenever I have to fix an old system, I must remember which version of Rails it's using and it's including in, the, in, in its directory, and they're not forward compatible. I mean, the, the, uh, between the version 1 and version 2, many very popular things were dropped because, well, we're moving and we're, we don't want to be stuck. Yeah, so, uh, uh, and, and another problem here is that, uh, well, we provide as a distribution updates and fixes. Yep. What happens there is that uh, they, they, they just copy over the files all over. So if, say, I am a, an ISP and I am hosting tens or hundreds of uh, Rails systems, I will probably have to enter each one of them and, and patch it whenever something uh, some new version comes along. And of course, a fix will not come to an old version. A security fix will only be applied to the head of the de development. Maybe to, uh, as Rails is large already, maybe to, uh, to the uh, latest uh, stable release, but not to all the releases. So there, there is a, 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 a trust problem in, in there. Uh, well, what, what we are doing currently, uh, I'm, I'm sad that I didn't uh, start writing this earlier because I really uh, would have liked to have uh, Adam Majors inside in this because he is the guy who's packaging uh, Rails and knows much better than me how he's is handled in handling this. But there are some modifications. For example, when you create uh, a, a Rails application, its directory structure, Rails root vendor Rails, points to user share Rails which is centrally controlled in Debian. Although, ho however, of course, you can uh, remove that symbolic link and unpack uh, uh, static, frozen, or whatever you call it, Rails tree in there. Uh, this, uh, well, uh, the problem here is that if Rails co continues to ship non not backwards compatible changes, uh, then I may up, uh, update my, my live system and my old applications will start, stop working because they are linked the way we are used to. Yep. Uh, okay, I, I, I went over this already. And there's another very different and very important uh, issue, yeah, that, uh, which is deployment. Uh, one of the things that uh, attracts many users to Debian is that you want to test a package, you, you don't have to worry too much about it, you just install it, and the usual case is it's ready for using. Sometimes, yes, I, I agree, for example, uh, the talk uh, Andrew presented earlier, uh, web applications are well known for being a pain in the ass. But, uh, I don't know, I install something, I don't want to uh, be haggling with it uh, in order to start uh, uh, knowing if it works for me. Uh, the thing is, uh, Rails has to set up an application server, has to set up a, a database uh, connection, and, and has to set up something that links the application server to the web server. Which, uh, and the, the components for each of those changes from time to time. Yeah, I, I've been in uh, writing uh, for Rails for, uh, as I told you, around two years. And when I started with it, the favorite uh, deployment strategy was to have a, a, Apache, a, a Apache server uh, using mod FCG, FCGI. A, a FCGI or FastCGI is a protocol for, well, 
uh, handling uh, requests to a, uh, to an uh, ongoing uh, running uh, application, yeah, for an application server, and using a pen for load balancing and, and maybe clustering. Uh, then someone said, well, FCGI is uh, quite, uh, quite troublesome to get uh, installed. Yes, I know it, it can take a, a couple of hours if you're, you're not used to doing it. Let's use Apache plus SCGI, which is easier. Good, everything moves there. I even uploaded to Debian uh, the Rails SCGI package, which didn't even enter uh, unstable because I just uh, one, one week later requested for its removal because it was no longer hip. Yeah, it was out of uh, fashion. <laughs> then it's any web server because web servers are dumb. They, they're not supposed to be intelligent as Apache is. So any web server plus the Mongrel uh, application server, which is uh, what we're doing now. But right now there's uh, another idea that's called Passenger or Mod Rails for Apache only. Uh, I don't know. I haven't even touched it. <laughs> we will be s shipping Lenny with uh, Mongrel and that's it. Uh, so, well, uh, Rails is very friendly for developing web applications, but uh, it's a pain for deployment. And, uh, well, deployment is one of the areas I think our application shines, uh, our distribution shines. Uh, right now, there are no Rails applications yet uh, uh, distributed uh, in Debian, which is, uh, which is uh, somewhat, somewhat uh, strange. The, uh, there are many great applications uh, out there, and uh, it's very popular. But yes, no, uh, nobody had, until two days ago, taken the, the, the pain to build a proper package. Uh, coincidentally, when I was uh, writing these slides, uh, somebody wrote to the, to the IRC channel, to Debian Ruby, hey, I have this Rails application package. Uh, can you test it and tell me why? OK, uh, I learned uh, a bit from it. There's a, lo a long way uh, to polish it, but I think we will soon be able to upload it. The thing is, it, it's a mess inside, but well, uh, we should get some Rails application in Debian. And I am sure that if you install a web application, you don't have to worry as a user which framework it's based on, what language is it. You just want to, to use it. So the deployment must be addressed. Um, OK. Uh, I've oh, uh, I don't have this yet. But well, the, the general developer community culture. There's a very big uh, cultural difference between Debian and the Rails community. As uh, Lucas said, well, R Ruby was already uh, 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 decently known, and it's a very nice uh, language, but uh, it was not popular until Rails came along. So if you see the early uh, Rails, uh, the, the early Ruby uh, programmers, they are very similar to the Perl uh, culture. They are very Unix-minded, which is great. Uh, and they have very good quality software. But the Rails community is usually much more uh, Windows-minded. So they, they have all these problems uh, created by Gems and similar. In fact, uh, Gems recently became the, the official way of uh, uh, packaging libraries, which is very sad. Uh, the Rails developers tend to look for the newest features for their production systems and tend to value less long-term stability and maintainability. Interaction with upstream regarding older versions can be problematic. Yes, I will not get from most developers uh, their attention to fix a bug in, a, in an older release. Yep. And of course, uh, I, I expect uh, if there's uh, a Rails pusher around here, he, he may be angry at this, but uh, I think uh, not committing uh, to, to supporting a stable release is not thinking uh, about the user. And in the end, well, if we're not thinking about the user, we may just as well not publish anything, yeah, because it will only be usable for, for ourselves. Yep. Extreme programming uh, ad or agile development works very good if you are a great programmer and, and do it for inside work. But uh, we take pride on, <laughs> on 
on uh, on doing this for everybody and and doing it uh, well. So well, that's uh, that's what I have here. Uh, as I as I tell you, I recently got this uh, this, this person who, uh, who sent us a, a, an almost uh, usable uh, Rails uh, application package. The thing is, for example, he uh, he has in in his uh, in his application directory. Yeah, uh, I'll just show you as a simple example of what's wrong there. Uh, yeah, yeah, wait. Uh, I think I'll try to change the profile. No, uh, to, 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 to make it black over white. Color. Which. Ah, oh. <laughs> very good. Okay, but okay, uh, yeah, so. Okay, so if, if we see. Okay, this is the typical uh, Rails uh, layout, but. This was really amazing to me. Yeah, we see a regular Debian rules here. <laughs> yeah, and here there, there's something quite odd. He's removing, because Lintian complains, all those licenses. Yeah? <laughs> Why? Because in vendor plugins, each of those should be a separate package. Yes? Uh, so we have a, a source directory that's 8 megabytes, out of which, well, at least, uh, I don't know, th this is at least uh, 2 megabytes, should be completely sent somewhere else. And uh, I am sure that here we have a, a lot of extra craft. Yep. So well, uh, uh, my my point here is that I am very interested in making this work. I I don't know if uh, any of you have uh, experience either writing or w working with such uh, things. But uh, <laughs> yes, please. Well, I, I don't please the, just wait for the microphone. I, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Okay. Yeah. Um, how have you not given up yet? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, uh, how do you? Uh, I I am impressed and amazed at your persistence, and I wonder, on a personal level, how you have not given up. Well, you know, the the thing is, I am very persistent because it's very nice to write applications in Rails. I that that's what I do for a living. So, but. I want my applications to be usable in the way I think uh, software development should work. Yeah, actually, on a more serious note, I, I, when I work on uh, the gems issue, issue uh, I always end up thinking, maybe we should just drop all of this from Debian because actually it's not uh, the way, um, well, it's not useful to most of our users because the way we package it, it's not that, um, useful for them, well, for I mean, in stable release, there's no point in packaging uh, one version of Rails, since anyway, uh, they will mm -hmm. break backward compatibility with it in uh, six months, at, if we are lucky. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> we could just, well, I'm not sure that, may maybe we should seriously ask ourselves if we shouldn't just drop all of this stuff and don't care about it. Mm -hmm. It would be very sad because, well, yeah. After all, the, yeah, I know that as a distribution, we are, we should try to cater more about the about the applications than uh, rather than the f development fr frameworks. But if we want to, I mean, if we're going to ship an application that includes Rails and then another one and then another one and they are different versions of Rails, uh, it will be also very painful. So we have two problems at hand. One is that um, the Rails developers don't, the, the, the people that make Rails don't um, really, don't have a, a, um, a sane release schedule and policy. Mm -hmm. And the other is that the, the developers that develop things on top of Rails ship everything 
with their application. Mm -hmm. So have you tried to talk to upstreams about that? Um, some upstreams are very, very, very cooperative. For example, uh, well, I just started uh, uh, packaging a couple of the of the gems or the libraries or whatever you want to call them. Uh, uh, this uh, will paginate. It's uh, a simple pagination uh, thing for uh, for an object relation mapper. And uh, well, the the upstream is uh, most willing to uh, to interact with me. Yeah, great. Uh, and I think, for example, the Rails core, because they are very good developers in the end, the Rails itself uh, uh, also interact uh, properly. But the, the problem is you, uh, there's a whole lot of uh, modules around that we also need to work with. Uh, I, I am Antonio Tessero. I'm also a member of the Hubi Extras team. And uh, my personal testimony is that I also work uh, for a living with Rails, uh, developing Rails, and I end up packaging everything that I need to to use in my applications that are not packaged yet, which is what most of the people in the group do also, I think. By the way, thanks for packaging your paginate. And which I, sadly, which I do is just unpack the latest version of Rails that works with my application, because uh, I'm working on an application which is rather large at the moment, so migrating for the next version of Rails requires a considerable amount of effort, so I, I think that what Lucas says, uh, even if it looks some, some way a little sad, maybe it's the, the most uh, viable way to do, because it's very tough to, to keep up with the, all those changes and oh, several useful applications use lots of plugins. Mm -hmm. And in, on the other hand, I think that it's, uh, it's very important to be able to package various applications, although I think that I didn't find so much uh, free Rails applications worth packaging, but ReadyMine is surely one that just having ReadyMine in Debian is, is worth enough because it's for those who doesn't know ReadyMine is a project management like Traki or other mm -hmm. projects, but supports a lot of VCS and has a lot of cool features like projects to be projects and even for tracking non-software projects is very good. So I don't know. I I think that we should discuss more and maybe try to to find a real solution to the gems issue that's, that can be worked out to, to be able to move on. But because, well, may, maybe something that could be done, one second, Alan. <laughs> maybe something that uh, could be uh, done is to treat this as we would treat most uh, C-based libraries uh, on which we have uh, different SO names and, uh, and we can have more than one version. Not for all of the, of course, all of the the gems themselves, but for the framework. We could, right now, uh, ship Rails 1.2, Rails 2.0, Rails 2.1. It's uh, a burden, but uh, I think uh, for, uh, for cases like yours, where you have to support uh, uh, an application written over one year ago, I think uh, it could be the, the way, I don't know. Actually, that's exactly what I was going to say. We have this model of development in a number of cases. We have got, look at Perl. There is uh, each or, uh, or Emacs. Mm -hmm. You have different versions of Emacs. They we ship source. They are compiled into uh, the different areas. I have used Rails mostly as just developing a uh, web app for myself. I haven't tried packaging anything. The I would like to respond to the comment made that maybe it is too hard to package. I don't think this is the case. The vendor plugins thing that we see here is a effort by people who use Rails to make a self-contained application. You can drop whatever you want packaged by somebody else in vendor plugins, and then you can just start up your application, move it to a new machine, and everything still works. Uh, this is a solution for a platform which is not Debian. They are trying to find solutions for 
you know, less capable platforms. I think we can do better. I think we can take everything in the vendor plugins thing and say this is for Rails 2.0, and then if th we need to, we can support Rails 2.3 or 3.0 when the time comes. Giving up such a useful platform for creating web applications I do not think is the right solution for either for Debian or for people who use Debian. Well, the problem is that we are not going to modify all of Rails ourselves to implement that. So we are need to have someone to talk with, and currently Upstream isn't really open to talking about those issues because they consider it okay, and they think that it's the right way to do it the way they do currently. So uh, we can try, but... <laughs> no, but, 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 but what he suggested, and what I was uh, also saying, which is quite similar, uh, I think would even be better regards, uh, regarding upstream, because we would still be providing their, their latest uh, release and the releases that other people are already using for existing uh, applications. The problem right now is that, for example, uh, I almost cried the day that uh, Rails 2 entered uh, unstable because my development is made on, on an unstable machine. And suddenly I could not uh, work anymore because Rails didn't work. So I had to freeze to one, uh, Rails 1.2 on all of my previous applications. That was at least one, one day worth of, of uh, work. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I think we have two problems here, as some people say. And one of the problems is uh, distrib distributing the, the package. So uh, I think we should uh, look uh, near uh, upstream and, and, say, and try to propose a patch to jam system. If we can fix jam to, to be it compatible with Debian package, I think we can uh, have a, a hard work trying to separate in, in smaller packages. Then uh, the upstream will be able to use Gem, and Gem will be compatible with the Debian system. Uh, but I know it, uh, it will be hard to Debian uh, maintainers because they will need to work with the upstreamers, wait for uh, Apache enters, uh, maybe. <laughs> I, I think it's hard, but I think the solution is, is a point or effort in, in fixing jam system. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure if it's a good comparison with uh, compare uh, jam with Python uh, setup tools. Uh, I, I think it's a pain work with uh, many versions of uh, one library in Python, but you can do uh, packages to Python libraries, uh, not so easily, but not so hard as in gems. But uh, and uh, if it's a standard, uh, so you have Python Central that uh, uh, reduces the, the the effort of making making uh, Python library packages. Maybe gems is the the point we need to to work more. I'm wondering if gem, I mean, why aren't we treating gems just like uh, itar.gz? Why does gems have to integrate with the Debian packaging system? We can treat upstream package gem sources, package them up for Debian using the way that we always do, and just ignore the fact that gems exist. Yeah, no, the thing is, we are doing that. Uh, but let me see if I find it uh, easily here. Okay, so usually uh, in in Ruby you you use here require. Yeah, this is the, uh, for including something. But let me see a, on a, a random here vendor plugins access list. One second. Strange. I uh, require gem. Yeah, not re gem require. Hmm. 
no uh, well here let me see this oh, oh. no sorry no this requires you ruby gems uh, but it's not uh, using them as gems please uh, If you have uh, a Libby, Ruby Open IG, it has something like that. Um, a comment uh, received from IRC, Gunnar. Yep. Um, as Lamy says, uh, there's been a few suggestions in the past for using Volatile for these types of web apps and libraries. Sorry? There's been a few suggestions in the past for using Volatile uh -huh. for these kinds of web applications and libraries. Have you got any comment on that? I prefer, I mean, it's a way out, yes, if we want to ship the latest. But the problem is not shipping the latest. The problem is that we have to ship several versions of, of everything. Uh, well, I don't have a, an example here handy, but the problem, the invasiveness of the patches is that uh, I instead of requiring something, you require underscore gem something. And it looks in a different uh, file hierarchy, and uh, well, uh, if I, if I'm not mistaken, it can also, it can even be used to fetch the the gems and install them. Please in the back. Hi, um, I was just looking online when you said the require uh, gem require underscore gem thing, and. Um, Apparently that's deprecated now, and they've switched to using a combination of require and a separate gem command. Will that make things easier, harder, or neither? Well, uh, how long will it take for a deprecated uh, behavior to settle? That's the thing with uh, the Rails uh, people. They deprecate everything. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, would <laughs> I would have to see that. Okay. Uh, that's not to say that um, having different Rails versions packaged, but uh, when Rails upgraded to 2.1 and, and Ruby went to 1.8.7, mm -hmm. Rails 2.0 was completely broken. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I even contacted Aiden to pr uh, try to, so, to sort out the problem with the current uh, Rails package. And he said it, he was already working on packaging 2.0 and in the meantime, I had to backport several patches from mm -hmm. to fix the, the compatibility with Ruby 1.h.7 and ended up have uh, my own Git tree of Rails with yes. several backported fix that I'm sure didn't fix everything. They just fixed what my application was breaking on. So uh, I wonder if such thing happens uh, during a freeze, for instance. If Rails 2.2 is launched tomorrow and we are in freeze and everything well, is broken. But, but there, there's one thing we, we must keep in mind. Maybe you and I uh, are wrongly using a Debian unstable machine for our real life uh, development work. I mean, I want to, to have a, a, a reliable, stable machine because I know there, there, there will be changes between my environment and the uh, stable, but uh, we, we, we should try to keep stable sane. Uh, there will be bumps, of course, but... <laughs> For what you just said about uh, Ruby 187 breaking Rails uh, 2.0, um, this won't, this is not a problem because of freeze, because Ruby 1.8.7, I mean Ruby 1.8 will be frozen before Wales anyway. So it's not a problem with the Debian's, Debian's freeze. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, well, my, my aim here was to 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 tell about the state of uh, this uh, work we're doing, I don't think uh, I don't know uh, is, uh, is there something else to add or should we call this a session? Okay. Well, thanks.